had discovered the source of ultimate power. We need to get it back or the world is doomed. You brought some kind of <clears throat> space porcupine. I am an echidna warrior. Hmm. Hedgehog. It's time to say goodbye to humanity. Welcome to the new norm. This is your moment to be the big hero. Bad time to say this, but I don't actually have a plan. Hey, you got a little something on your... Uh, boy. Someone call an Uber? It's cold in here. Let's turn up the heat. <clears throat> Aloha. This is Trinidad, the Island Man, your Island Man, coming to you live once again from beautiful Hawaii here on the island of Oahu, bringing you, yes you, the best movie reviews on the entire island of Oahu. And yes, this is Trinidad, the Island Man, your Island Man. And as you may know, this weekend was opening weekend for Sonic the Hedgehog Part 2. Um, and I went ahead and I saw it yesterday, Saturday, uh, at the movie theater. And uh, I gotta say, it was pretty sold out with kids. So, without further ado, remember our rating scale, shock a thumbs up, it's good to see, I recommend it. Shock a thumbs down, it's junk, I don't recommend it. And, for Sonic the Hedgehog Part 2, it is a shock a thumbs up. Now, this goes ahead and follows up on the tremendous success of the very first one that kind of came in, you know, uh, gosh, just just after the start of the pandemic, pretty much, or at least when we thought it was going to get over the first time. And, uh, you know, and it was a fabulous box office success. And I have to say that part two definitely follows in its footsteps and uh, for the most part successfully uh you know builds on the world of sonic the hedgehog uh introducing tails and uh as you saw from the trailers knuckles uh as well as kind of a uh, knuckles is kind of a villain at first you know, uh, you know, I, I'm not very familiar with the video game of Sonic the Hedgehog and Sega games overall. A friend of mine had a Sega system, Dreamcast, um, but I, you know, I was always a Nintendo man until moving into the PlayStations once Nintendo kind of disappeared uh, after the, you know, the 64, you know, thing. So, um, so that's, that's kind of where I was, and I always felt Sonic was a Mario kind of rip-off thing, uh, <laughs> you know, which essentially was run fast, oh, coins, you know, instead of coins, it's rings, but it's, it was pretty much the same thing. Let's say Luigi had tails, you know, and eventually even in like uh, Super Mario 3, you got like, you know, you could get this raccoon tail that could help you fly or glide. And it's like, hmm, you know, sounds like Nintendo's starting to steal a little from Sega and Tails, so, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but I digress. Uh, now, Sonic 2 the Hedgehog uh, stars Ben Swartz returns as the voice of Sonic. Uh, Colleen uh, O'Shaughnessy uh, returns from the video games. Uh, and I believe the animated uh, series that was on for a limited run uh, as Tails. And Idris Elba is introduced as Knuckles. Uh, and his tough guy voice persona really uh, shines through as uh, Knuckles. And you get a lot of backstory, builds on the first one, whereas, you know, within the first five uh, 10 minutes of Sonic 1, you know, Sonic flees to Earth, uh, having been attacked, you know, his, his family, uh, you know, caretakers, the owl, who had been teaching him his abilities, uh, were attacked, and we find out that it was Knuckles' tribe that had attacked them. Uh, and apparently both had, uh, you know, met, met their demise 
at the hands of one another, possibly. You know, we might find out that there was an another entity later in the series, in this franchise, <clears throat> as it does definitely set up for the next chapter. But as a result of that, Knuckles is pitted directly against Sonic and seems to be his match in every way. Um, you know, having great speed as well, maybe not quite as fast as Sonic, but definitely much, much stronger physically, uh, which was always the namesake of, of Knuckles with those giant fists. And we're introduced to Tails, who has come to help Sonic in his time of need, uh, initially to warn him and then hang out and help him uh, defeat uh, Knuckles, who rescues uh, Dr. Eggman, Jim Carrey, from, uh, you know, the Mushroom Planet and brings him back to Earth to team up with him against Sonic the Hedgehog in hopes of finding uh, the Great Emerald, uh, a source of ultimate power. Uh, and although we find out and discover that Knuckles is doing this for overly, you know, overall uh, beneficial, uh, you know, pursuits, uh, Dr. You know, uh, Robotnik simply wants to uh, use this to control all of Earth and thus later on the universe. Uh, very much a Thanos kind of uh, gauntlet situation, you know, getting all the Infinity Stones. Uh, well, you know, we find out that uh, kind of these, this emerald is made up of all these uh, power stones or whatever. Uh, and so it is very much a kind of a Thanos kind of thing. And there is even a little bit of an Avengers reference uh, to Infinity War, to Endgame in this. Um, and not to mention, you know, I know that, uh, you know, in the video game, Dr. Robotnik was always making giant robots as kind of the big boss level for the ends of the games. But in this one, it really, you know, they really kind of went out of their way to make it look, at least give it the colors of like an Iron Man suit <laughs> from Marvel. So I think they're trying to definitely cash in a little bit on that as well. Um, overall, again, uh, they juggle these three characters, Sonic, Knuckles, Tails, very, very well. And when the movie is, is focused solely on them and their plight and their struggle, uh, including Dr. Robotnik, Jim Carrey's character, um, the movie shines and it progresses as beautifully as part one did. However, um, they make a mistake of, of in addition to building their universe or building their, their world and fleshing it out, they introduce several offshoot characters to the main characters, the human characters, James Marston and his wife, you know, the sheriff. Um, uh, they introduce a new deputy, uh, inept and bumbling. They introduce um, James Marston's uh, uh, wife's a uh, girlfriend that you had seen briefly in uh, the first movie um, and her love interest slash fiance as they're getting married in Hawaii. Now, it was here on Oahu. It was over at the Koalina Resorts at the Four Seasons. Uh, if you vacation here or even if you visit Oahu, you can go see those very same uh, areas and it is beautiful. You can see the lagoons at which they were married. Uh, there's a chapel there which most likely that took place at um, and see a lot of the lagoons and and the beautiful off of just right off the ocean uh, shots which uh, you know really feature Hawaii and it can be kind of private uh, because it is on the hotel grounds. Uh, three hotels actually uh, this was at the Four Seasons, but it's mainly the resort area of the Colina Hotel and the Alani for the Disney resorts. Um, so, you know, it, it is a beautiful manicured area and definitely must see if you visit Oahu on Hawaii. However, that said, and the tax break, of course, for filming uh, here in Hawaii, uh, it really didn't need to be in the film and that slows down the pace of the movie 
uh, slightly, not enough to give it a shock of thumbs down. This is still a shock of thumbs up movie, uh, just because it's so successful when it is focused on Tails, uh, Sonic, and even Knuckles, and especially Jim Carrey, who really revives his role as uh, Dr. Robotnik Eggman. Um, it's just that had they just stayed on those or even just focused on those guys and James Marston's, the sheriff's character and his wife, I think it would have been much stronger than trying to bring in this fiance, you know, uh, you know, another woman, uh, the sheriff's deputy, etc. cetera. Uh, Cause it does kind of slow down the pacing. Perhaps in the future, these, you know, James Marston may not want to be in this movie any longer, this franchise, uh, same with the wife and perhaps they were trying to build out and flesh out. It's like, okay, once he's gone, then we can move over to him, or maybe James Marston's getting too expensive in this movie. We'll just bring in the deputy to be the sidekick to Sonic yeah, on the human side of the house. But I'm here to tell you that the kids, and even me as an adult, we don't really care all that much. I mean, it does build the story. There are some touching moments with Sonic and James Marston, uh, Ben Swartz voicing Sonic, uh, where it is kind of heartfelt, and and in this one, Sonic truly embraces James Marston's character, the sheriff, as his father, and not only a mentor and friend, best friend, but as a father figure, as Sonic admits that he still has some growing up to do and learning, uh, especially with this superhero thing, that he can get help from Tails now, and, um, you know, and... Uh, possibly even Knuckles, as he has kind of trained to use these incredible powers, very much like Sonic. So, overall, a shock of thumbs up. Again, just some slowing when it moves over, unfortunately, to the human uh, side of the house, which is mostly the cause of the dilemmas in these things, where the humans are not act interacting with you know, the crazy animated characters, either Sonic, Knuckles, or Tails. Um, <clears throat> but it's that interplay with themselves. They try to make almost a secondary movie within the movie. Uh, maybe they feel that, oh, we've got to appease the adults with some adult talk or adult talk-like comedy. And, um, you know, but hey, guys, you're making this for the kids or for the fans of the game who loved Sonic. They're here. We're all here to see Sonic. We're not here to see James Marston. No offense, James. You know, I know you're, you know, hey, I get to finally see, show my face after the X-Men movies. People know who I am. It's like, okay, big deal. <laughs> you had some success in Westworld. Uh, you know, good on you, but we're here to see Sonic the Hedgehog, Knuckles, and now Tails, and Jim Carrey, uh, reprise his role as Dr. Robotnik, and that's all we need to see. Uh, and when it's all focused on those four guys, the core, it is beautiful. Uh, there's some Siberian fight scenes, uh, you know, that, you know, are shot. You, you've seen this in the trailer where Sonic refers to Knuckles as the Winter Soldier. Um, again, pulling on those Marvel heartstrings for fans. Um, and it really, really works, and we really get a, a sense of, of overpowering uh, odds that Sonic are, is facing, especially after he was so successful defeating them in the first one. You know, at least Dr. Robotnik in the first one. What menace can he bring? Well, Knuckles brings a lot of strength and power and menace against, uh, you know, Sonic and now Tails. And Robotnik steps up his game immensely, even before... He gets this ultimate power, and all three, Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails, must team up against him to stop him. Um, now, they say this is Jim Carrey's last role. Jim Carrey said, made some comments about he's going to retire. He's got plenty of stuff. He doesn't really need to act too much anymore. He's into art, painting, and stuff, if you guys don't know. Um... And, uh, you know, that's, you know, the, the movie kind of ends it for him 
in a questionable way. It's like, if we never see Dr. Robotnik, we can make certain assumptions at the end of this movie that what happened to him. Uh, or, easily enough, he could come back if he changes his mind or, you know, they want to put up another cameo if he's willing in part, you know, Sonic Part uh, 3, who knows, because it does open it up for a sequel, definitely. Uh, and I'll give you a spoiler. Uh, they move away from Robotnik into uh, Shadow uh, the Hedgehog, uh, who is, I guess, uh, I'm, again, not super familiar with the games or the anime, but, I, uh, you know, kind of a cloned version of Sonic. I might be wrong on that, but an evil version of Sonic, basically, called Shadow. All of his powers, etc., but he's evil. And so that is where the franchise in Part 3 will likely go. Uh, and without Robotnik, I'm not sure what other uh, brainy character or mastermind behind Shadow will be involved. But uh, I'm sure those of the anime and the games definitely already know uh, who created Shadow, etc. Uh, they kind of say it was kind of a shadowy off off the books uh, thing of the government, but you know it raises some other certain questions about how did they know about you know to duplicate make a duplicate Sonic before they knew about Sonic and why did it look like a hedgehog etc etc all of which I'm sure they'll explain in the third movie uh, briefly as they introduce this character Shadow. All right. So again, overall, a shock and thumbs up for Sonic the Hedgehog Part 2. Uh, it's a lot of fun, uh, especially when they stick to the core four characters, Robotnik, Jim Carrey, Ben Swartz, Sonic, uh, Colleen, O'Shaughnessy's Tails, and Idris Elba especially, still bringing it. Even though you don't see him, but you hear his voice, he's unmistakable Idris Elba, who's great in everything. Uh, you know, those guys definitely bring it and the movie works when it's specifically focused on them for sure. Uh, so yes, this will easily be number one at the box office this weekend. Strong shock and thumbs up for Sonic. Maybe not as great as the very first one, but still pretty darn good. All right, mahalo and aloha.